Two helicopters collided mid-air on Australia's Gold Coast on Monday, leaving at least four people dead. Three others were taken to the hospital in a critical condition. The crash took place close to SeaWorld Resort, Australia. Police said one of the helicopters managed to land safely on a sandbank, but the other crashed. Gary Worrell is Queensland Police Acting Inspector. Our initial um, in inquiries would appear that one has been taking off and one has been landing. At this stage, um, it's my understanding that uh, they're, they're, with the seven people that are injured are from uh, just one helicopter um, and all the others are still, still injured, but um, we are, we, we're obviously further inquiries are being conducted. The Australian Transport Safety Bureau has launched an investigation into the accident. Brazilian leftist Luiz Ignacio Lula da Silva was sworn into the presidency on Monday, completing a stunning comeback to assume office of a divided country and deliver a searing indictment of far-right Jair Bolsonaro, the incumbent who lost to Lula in October. Lula won just three months after he left prison. He had been charged with corruption and more than a decade after his first two terms in power. He's vowed a drastic change for a Brazil plagued by hunger, poverty and racism. And in a speech to Congress after he officially took the reins, he made a veiled threat towards his predecessor without mentioning Bolsonaro by name. We do not carry any spirit of revenge against those who tried to subjugate the nation to their personal and ideological purposes, he said. But we will guarantee the rule of law. Those who made mistakes will answer for their mistakes. Bolsonaro rattled Brazil's young democracy with baseless claims of electoral weakness that spawned a violent movement of election deniers, some of which have camped out in front of army barracks and called for a military coup. Bolsonaro left for the United States on Friday after refusing to concede defeat. Without presidential immunity, he now faces mounting legal risks for his anti-democratic rhetoric and handling of the pandemic. Lula said Bolsonaro committed, quote, genocide by failing to respond to the COVID-19 virus properly. However, his trip to Florida in the U.S. insulates him from any immediate legal peril. On Monday after the new president was sworn in, he drove in a Rolls Royce to the presidential palace where he walked up the ramp with a diverse group, a black child, a disabled man, and the chief of the Kayapo tribe. He was handed the presidential sash by Aline Souza, a black garbage collector. The sash handover is a hugely symbolic act in Brazil, and Bolsonaro said he would never do it for Lula. The new president wiped away tears during a subsequent speech. It's time to reconnect with friends and family. The tie is broken by hate speech and the spread of so many lies, he said. No more hate, fake news, guns and bombs. Our people want peace to work, study, take care of the family and be happy. In his first decisions as president, Lula restored the power of Brazil's Environmental Protection Agency to fight illegal deforestation, which had been weakened under Bolsonaro. He also revoked the former president's looser gun policies, which saw gun ownership soar in Brazil. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un has sacked the second most powerful military official after him, according to state media. Pak Jong-chon was the vice chairman of the Central Military Commission of the Ruler's Working Party and a secretary of the party's Central Committee. He's been replaced by Ri Yong-gil at the committee's annual meeting last week. No reason for the change was given. Pyongyang regularly revamps its leadership and the year-end party gathering has often been used to announce personnel reshuffles and major policy decisions. The party's Central Military Commission, which is headed by Kim, is considered the country's most powerful military decision-making body, above the Defence Ministry. Pak's replacement came as Kim called for developing new intercontinental ballistic missiles and a larger nuclear arsenal to counter the US and South Korea as key to North Korea's 2023 defense strategy. Thousands of people have been paying their respects to the late Pope Benedict XVI, whose remains are lying in state at St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. The 95-year-old died on New Year's Eve. Mourners started queuing hours before his body was transferred from the nearby monastery where he passed away. Benedict was a controversial leader for some, but was revered as a stalwart of traditional Catholic values by others.
He was both a great and humble person. Everybody could understand him. But I would say that it was this. His, he was not afraid to face the questions of today. He was, he was very open in, in that regard. For me, he was an innovator, mainly because he was the keeper of what the faith of the Church has been for 2,000 years. Benedict led the Catholic Church for eight years before stepping down due to ill health in 2013. His body will lie in state for three days.